Hey everyone, Adam here with another RimWorld guide. A quick apology for the delay on these new guides. I flipped my stream schedule a full 12 hours and has been wreaking havoc on my sleep schedule. Uh, but anyway, now you know which map to play on, which storyteller you want to choose, what the different difficulties do, all that stuff. But you're asking yourself, which scenario should I choose and how in the world do I decide which pawns to take? Well, this guide is going to answer just that. In this RimWorld Starting Colonist Guide, I'm going to be talking about the traits, skills, and passions that are best for each starting scenario in order to give you the best chance of success. As I talk about the first scenario, I'll also go over some general advice that will apply for every start you do, even custom scenarios. Alright, let's get started with the first scenario offered to you. Crash Landed. This is your standard starting scenario and lets you begin with three colonists who, as the name suggests, crash land and drop pods onto your chosen map. In addition to the three colonists, you'll also start with some weapons, medicine, clothes, and a little bit of food and material, and a pet. In the character selection screen, you'll see three selected colonists and five left behind colonists. You only need to worry about rolling three good pawns and can use the left behind spaces as sort of a storage for well rolled pawns just in case you don't find anything better. As you start to re-roll your starting colonists, there are a few things to keep in mind. The first is that traits are more important than skills, and passions are more important than skill numbers. This is because you can always increase a skill level, but without mods, you cannot change their traits or passions. So as I re-roll, I have my eyes specifically on the traits list. Instead of specifically looking for a set of three godlike traits, I'm more concerned that they have no detrimental traits. You can see my tier list of traits in an upcoming video, but for now, just try to make sure they do not have something that will decrease mood for themselves or other colonists or decrease the amount of work they can do, like Slothful or Gourmand. Once you've landed on a pawn with no flat out negative traits, you wanna look at their capabilities. Sometimes these are an extension of their traits or backstory, but not always. At this stage of the game, with only three people, we want to make sure that no one's incapable of violence or dumb labor. It's also a smart idea to make sure that you have some people that can fight fires. Now we will look at health and age. Basically, you don't want to take anyone with existing health conditions. There are some small caveats to this. For instance, taking someone with a painful scar on their torso who's a masochist. But in general, we don't want to see any pre-existing conditions. If the pawn has tons of great stats and traits, we may make an exception, especially if it's something we can fix before mid or late game and doesn't slow the colony down much, such as a cook or a researcher with a peg leg, but it's not ideal. As far as age goes, you want to make sure your colonist is as young as possible. I generally try to keep starting colonists in the 20 to 45 range. Teens are fine, but they will never have an adult backstory and thus may miss out on some of those bonuses to their stats and passions. Older pawns, and by older, I definitely mean RimWorld's definition of older, have a chance to acquire a debilitating age-related health issue on every birthday. Later in the game, you can take care of these random bad backs with Bionic Spine, but it's going to take a while to get there, so we don't want to deal with it at this stage of the game. Now that you have a colonist who has decent traits, isn't incapable of the important stuff, isn't too old, and isn't riddled with disease, you can start looking at their stats. As I mentioned earlier, passions are more important than raw skill level to an extent. I'll get into that more in a moment when I suggest specific skills for the crash landed scenario though. If you see a large double flame next to a stat, that means the character has a burning passion for that skill. A pawn with a burning passion will gain experience while using that skill at a rate of 150%. Not only that, they'll get a mood boost when working that job. Normal passion is represented by a smaller flame and will allow that pawn to increase in experience at a rate of 100%. With no multipliers from passions or traits, normal colonists will increase at only a 35% speed. So, as you can surmise, a starting colonist that has a planting score of 4, but has a burning passion in that field, pun, will quickly catch up to and surpass an 8 skill planter and be happy doing it.
All right, now you know how to search for a good colonist, but which skills should you aim for in a crash landed specific playthrough? Well, many things can work, but for the smoothest start, I suggest having this. First, you want a grower who can either craft, socialize, or doctor. The more of those, the better. You also want a builder who can also either craft, socialize, or doctor. And lastly, you want a cook who can either plant or build. Ideally, you want your cook to have at least a six skill point in cooking, your builder to have six or more points into construction, and your grower to have at least eight points in growing. This will ensure you can grow your own heal root for medicine, cook some decent meals with a reduced chance at food poisoning, have someone ready to do medical tending, and have a warden to recruit the inevitable prisoners you're gonna end up taking. This basic starting list can be altered heavily to suit your own playstyle as well. For instance, if you are planning to start with a nutrient paste machine instead of cooking meals, then you could ignore the cooking skill in favor of another builder, grower, research specialist, animal handler, whatever you would like. If you're planning to make an immediate mountain base, for instance, perhaps you want to ensure you have someone with a burning passion for mining, or maybe everyone with a burning passion for mining. The second scenario, and one of my personal favorites, is the Lost Tribe. In this scenario, you begin with five people who have wandered onto the map you chose. They have less gear and resources in the Crash Landing Trio, but they do have a few more animals. The biggest change, however, is that the Lost Tribe starts with less pre-research tech in the research tree, and by default, they'll always research at a slower rate as the other starting scenarios. As always, there are mods or custom scenarios to get around this, but if you are playing with the vanilla Lost Tribe start, it will always take longer to research something, even after they have advanced beyond the point of looking like a tribe and are building spaceships and power armor. When choosing starter colonists for a tribal start, you want to follow the same basic guidelines as before. Try to pick pawns who have no bad traits, who can fight, who aren't too old, and who have no medical conditions. Since we have five starting colonists instead of three this time, we can either tighten things up a bit and make each person more specialized, or we can try to get a few jack of all trade types to bounce between things that need to be done. If you can though, the following list will give you an awesome start. Your first colonist can be a grower who can also either craft, socialize, or doctor when they're not needing to plant or harvest things. Your second colonist, a builder, who can also either craft, socialize, or doctor. Third, a cook who can also plant or build. Fourth, a hunter who can plant or build. And fifth, a dedicated researcher. As with the crash landed playthrough, many combinations can work and there's no absolutely correct one, but this list will give you a great start. As a tribal village, you will not have access to electricity for quite some time. As such, you will want to get started on research right away. You'll also need more food to feed your two extra colonists. Having someone that can hunt will also allow you to make pemmican, which can store for virtually ever. As always, the more people you have that can do the important, time-consuming jobs, the better. Another quick note about tribals is that they have become incredibly strong with RimWorld's newest sidecast mechanic. I'll have another guide about sidecasting in general, but basically when you're choosing pawns for your colony, the more characters you have with natural meditation listed in their background story, the better. The third scenario is the rich explorer. Unlike the previous scenarios, this one will have you starting with a single colonist. Give you an edge on your initial invading competition though, you will start with tons of supplies and one of the best ranged weapons in the game. So we have no one else to lean on, we have to make sure we are capable of surviving long enough to gain additional colonists. Ideally, this means someone with decent shooting skill, a planting skill of six or more, a construction score of six or more, and as high medical as you can get. Social will also prove handy for prisoner recruitment, but odds are you will have a reasonably early auto join event or a slave trader anyway. Basically, we want our character to be able to defend himself with his awesome weapon while building a small base with traps, feeding himself, and who is able to self-tend injuries. Also say that since we are starting alone, traits like super immune, 
Tough and Cannibal are even better than normal. Ah, Naked Brutality, the masochistic start that I have played more than any other. In this scenario, you will be starting with one colonist and absolutely nothing else. No clothes, no weapons, not even a speck of pemmican. I will definitely make a Naked Brutality playthrough specific guide at some point, but for now, we'll just go over the starting colonist selection. As with the Rich Explorer start, you are going to want someone that can protect and feed themselves until help arrives. Since with this start, you will not be using a great weapon, most likely an early club or bow, shooting skill is not as important as with the Rich Explorer. One of the best and easiest ways to survive the early years of Naked Brutality is to utilize traps. These can take a long time to build though, and it's painful when you fail a construction order on them. As such, I strongly suggest you look for a character with a burning passion for construction. If you can roll a pawn that has great building, decent planting, and who can tend to their own wounds until you can recruit another colonist, you will be in a great position to make it far. As with all starts though, you can play this in a multitude of ways and certain playstyles will dictate a deviation from these skills. One example is the solo animal handler. Animals in RimWorld are incredible for many reasons. You can get animals who produce food, animals that can do all the hauling work for you, and even animals who can fight and hold a choke point as you shoot and kill all the early invaders. In a scenario like this example, you would perhaps want a passion or high skill in animal handling and not worry as much about planting, for instance. Regardless what skill set you choose to play though, super immune, tough, or cannibal are all amazing starting traits for naked brutality. And that does it. Hopefully this RimWorld guide has helped you to know what you should look for in your starting colonists. Remember to look at traits and passions more so than starting skill numbers, to an extent anyway. Also keep a really close eye on health and age. Get some colonists who can build, keep themselves fed, and protect one another long enough to recruit some more help. I hope you enjoyed this RimWorld guide. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, and commenting below. All those things help me out with the YouTube algorithms a ton and are much appreciated. If you haven't seen my other RimWorld guides or RimWorld challenge playthroughs, you can find those in the links in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.